Well, the point of today's video is to kind of very quickly and concisely, or try to, break down how you could grow literally hundreds, if not possibly thousands, but definitely hundreds of pounds of food every year for essentially a one-time investment of 20, somewhere between $20 and $30. Uh, so stay tuned because we're going to tell you how to do that. <coughs> Thinking ahead to the 2022 uh, growing season uh, and everything that's gone on in the last few years with supply chains and you name it, you could go down that rabbit hole for a long time. Trying to take control or lessen your consumer dependency on things is certainly starting to seem like a good idea. And one of the best ways to do that, although uh, it sounds really simple, is grow your own food or as much of the, your own food as you possibly can. Because we all have to eat. So the more food you can grow for yourself, the less dependent you are on supply chains. And this video is really what I guess we think is a gateway or entry way to do this and, and actually grow hundreds of pounds of food because we'll link it up above. Uh, we did a video that sort of looks at some statistics on how much your average uh, you know, North American, whether that's Canadian or, uh, or U.S. Uh, family eats in a year, family of four, for example, and it's a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot to feed a human. It takes a lot of diversity and it takes a lot of pounds. One of the best ways to do that and, and be healthy is squash. Squash are a powerhouse in the garden and have a lot of boxes ticked as far as they're relatively low maintenance. They literally produce hundreds of pounds of food. The more of them you grow, you could, you could literally get into the thousands of pounds of food. They are nutritious. And they're also something that if you had to buy the quantity of what you can grow, it's cost prohibitive. So we're going to take a little bit more of a look at squash. And essentially, if you were starting from day one or wanted to have food security, what you would need to do to consistently make sure that you can keep this going indefinitely for very little investment. So squash is fairly familiar to most people but uh, not everybody really thinks about it too seriously. And a lot of people don't even know how to use it. Squash is nutritionally fairly good for you. Uh, and that's something definitely to keep in mind. It's, it's by some people considered to be fairly nutritionally dense, especially the winter squashes, but even the summer squashes have their value. Squash is, uh, is high in things like beta carotene, uh, vitamin C, vitamin B6, it's high in fiber, which uh, is important <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Um, and it's also considered to be fairly high in magnesium and potassium. So these are, all th these are all things that you should be having in your diet. Now, this is not an exhaustive discussion on food value, but you're still talking about a nutritionally dense food, which in this case is a fruit, all squash are fruit, even though you grow them in your vegetable garden, that you can very easily grow for yourself. So here is one of the uh, unassuming fruits that's been in storage since we harvested it back in the fall of uh, 2021. Before you get to this, you have to start somewhere. And like so many other vegetables, the place to start is seeds. And I did some research briefly online, and a package of squash seeds right now, so this was uh, just today, which is uh, February of uh, 2022, the average price for a pack of, of uh, squash seeds in Canadian dollars right now is about $2.99 to $3 to $4. There is some variability there and there's some rare varieties that are more expensive and some hybrids that might be a little bit cheaper, but generally speaking, that was the price. That's a very small investment. And most packages of seeds give you far fewer seeds than what's in the baggie in front of you. You, you typically are getting between 10 to 20 seeds. Uh, somewhere between 12 to 20 seems to be a bit more common. So for a very nominal amount of money, you can get your very own variety of squash. But the seeds is only the starting point. Once you get those seeds, 
you kind of need to know a little bit of information. And uh, before I get into this section, because I think this is the part that loses people, you don't have to be a botanist. You don't un have to understand scientific nomenclature and naming of species. You just have to understand the vast majority of squash belong to one of these four species you see on the table. There are others. That's not the point of this video. We'll discuss that later. So the first and most familiar, Cucurbita, or for short, C, uh, that's the genus, Cucurbita pepo. This is our uh, yellow crooked neck summer squash. The vast majority of summer squashes are Cubra pepo, zucchinis, etc. Species 2, which is probably the second most familiar, is Cucurbita maxima, which is a lot of the Hubbard type squashes. Uh, obviously there's lots of variety though. Species 3, which is again also fairly common, but particularly with butternut squash, is Cucurbita mustata. I think I'm saying that right. And the fourth one, and the least familiar to most people, is Cucurbita mixta slash agyrosperma which they've changed the scientific name, which is a great example of why it's good to know about it, but you do not need to memorize this. All you need to take away from this discussion right here is that the variety you see sitting on the table is four distinct species that, generally speaking, do not hybridize. So you can grow four different varieties of squash, one of each, of the four species and essentially save seeds indefinitely. So that's kind of a brief look at what we grew in 2021 as far as squash varieties and I do want to reiterate here I know this is where we, we, we lose people's attention uh, so please keep watching because I think the next little bit we're going to talk about will really reinforce what we're talking about but you don't have to be a biologist or a botanist or any of that stuff you don't even have to remember those scientific names all you have to remember is they exist. All the diversity of squash that's out there basically, and I say basically because there are some exceptions, but basically belongs to one of four different species. And as long as you know those four exist and you know you, to look for them, you can pick four varieties that you like. So in 2021, we changed it up and we grew Canada Crookneck squash instead of the Waltham butternut. So we basically switched that species to another one. And we're glad we did, because that's the other part about this, and we're not going to go into any exhaustive detail here, but you can do a lot of things culinary-wise with squash. We make our Canada Crooknecks, we make them into squash fries. Um, the uh, Our Cuba Maximas, the big blue squashes, which we don't know the name of, uh, we use them for like the classic, you know, buttery, brown, sugary squash that you'd eat sort of on Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. The uh, the green striped Kershaw squash, which was uh, the C. agrosperma slash mixta, that one is our substitute for pumpkin because here's the dilemma. We can't grow a lot of the pumpkin varieties if we grow the Cuba pepo, which was the uh, the yellow crooked neck squash. Like 50% of the pumpkins are that are that species, and 50% are Cuba maxima. So you just have to make some choices, but you have flexibility on making those choices. So I wanted to stress that. And of course, with this, the uh, sort of last step, I guess, in the process, if you've done your planning properly, is saving seeds, which we're not going to go into great detail here. It's essentially very simple. It's no more difficult than uh, literally scooping out the seed you want, one squash, if you've, uh, as I say, done your planting correctly, will give you tons of seeds to replant next year, the year after, share with others. Uh, yeah, you will get enough to share with others. Once you've harvested and just before you're preparing your squash, you uh, have the chance, if you've planned properly, to get a huge amount of seeds. So next we're going to get into kind of that meat and potatoes here of why potentially in today's world you should really give some serious thought to growing squash potentially instead of meat and potatoes. So this meat and potato business, what I'm going to get at here is what we grew in 2021 as far as poundage of squash. 
what that value would have been had we bought it. And I will quantify here that you probably wouldn't go to the grocery store and buy so much squash because it's relatively expensive. So the average price per pound, and I just looked this up, this is in Canadian dollars, and it's going to vary. This is just grocery store price that I found today was $1.99 a pound. And I know that that does vary. Uh, if you can find it at a good price in the fall, you might be able to load up on a lot of winter squash for a cheaper price. In 2021, we grew 78.87 pounds of summer squash. And our summer squash was the yellow crooked neck squash, the Cuba Pepo. We also grew 442.81 pounds of winter squash between our other three species. That's a lot of squash. So in total, if we took that poundage and times it by the $1.99, it would have cost us $1,038.14 to purchase that volume of food. That's a lot. That's a lot of food for less than $15 <laughs> if you had bought all the seeds. The real kicker here, if you follow our kind of recommendation on the seed saving. Only pick the four. Figure out how to save seeds, because it's not that difficult, and keep it going year after year after year. And let's say you grew the same amount every year, because I don't think that, that volume is all that unreasonable for others to grow. We didn't grow it in a very big space. So here's where the extrapolation, I think, in this exercise gets really interesting, because essentially we grew 520 pounds, give or take, of squash, which is a lot of squash. If your average individual needs essentially 2,000 pounds to feed them for a year, which is what that's based on the research that we've done, that's a substantial part of your diet that you have spent virtually nothing on and virtually no time on either. They're very time unintensive. But if you took that volume and that price at that volume, of uh, $1,038.14 and you did it for 10 years you grew that 520 pounds of squash for 10 years that's a savings of $10,381.40 at current prices for food right now that's substantial over when you start looking at it long term when you go back to the initial investment of 12 to 16 dollars for four packages of seeds and you learn the skills to keep that going, you can, in 10 years, you can save yourself $10,000 on your food bill. That's impressive. That's, that's impressive. With all that being said, I know there's going to be some people that are going to say, but isn't squash hard to grow or doesn't take a lot of space? Some of them, like the uh, yellow crookneck summer squash, which is Cuba Pepo, are bush types. So they don't take up a lot of space. Others are big sprawling vines. But the nice part is, when you look at the value, both nutritionally and, and money-wise, I'm going to say it, that that can produce for you, squash is no longer the creeping vine that's relegated to the back part of your property. That should be like front and center in your yard because that's saving you $10,000 in 10 years <laughs> if, you do it, if you do it properly. But in all fairness though, squash is not super hard to grow. There are issues with it, depending on where you are. It's not cold hardy, so you do have to make sure you get it in at the right times, at least where we are. You do have to allocate some space, but you have to allocate space to growing anything. But you don't have to do a lot. It's pretty much, uh, you, you plant it, and whether you direct seed it or start it from transplants, once it gets established, you're almost not looking at it, maybe watering occasionally, you don't really look at it for a large part of the year. So your, your bulk of your labor is harvesting it in the fall, which is not really a terrible thing to do because it usually takes a couple of hours <laughs> to harvest literally hundreds of pounds of, uh, pounds of food. Now you do have to consider storage because you won't be able to, if you're in an area that freezes, you won't be able to store it outside. But you can probably find a spot in a basement or a, a cellar or a pantry, etc., where you could, you could store it. You will also find that they don't all keep long-term. Some varieties keep longer than others. For example, as an obvious one, this yellow crooked neck is way past its prime. So even though this uh, yellow crooked neck squash is well past prime, you can hear it, it's gone like a gourd. We can't eat it anymore. It has another food item in there, 
which could be used for humans or livestock. It's full of seeds. And squash can be used in creative ways. So there's a lot more you can do with it than just the flesh value. But that flesh value is still, you want to talk about priceless food? That's priceless food, what you can produce for yourself. So on that note, hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you found the delve into the economics interesting and maybe have a bit of a newfound appreciation for a very simple old-timey uh, type of vet well, fruit, I should say, that can potentially save your household, like I said, thousands of dollars on your food bills, which might be something to look into for 2022 and beyond.